Well, hello again, Floss Tube. I'm happy to be with you today. And today is Friday, November 27th, 2020, the day after Thanksgiving. And today is my Floss Tube number three. So what I have to show you today is a finish that I'm super excited about. This is the Feast of Friendship. And I did this so long. Let me bring it a little closer. I haven't fully finished it yet, but I'm going to take it and get it framed. And um, this is the sew along, the stitch along, sorry, that I did with my friend Christy, who also made this bag for me at um, Crosshatch Quilts on Instagram. And also she has a floss tube. And here's the chart. That's by Blackbird Designs. And so I'm excited to have that finished. And... I'm going to take that to the framers and I'm going to take that to the framers at the same time. Yes, I've decided I'm going to go ahead and get this framed when I take my um, All Creatures Great and Small by Barbara Anna Designs. I love this stitch so much. Thanks to everyone who gave me feedback on what I should do and the majority was, yeah, if you're worried about it, you know, go ahead and just get it framed, which I agree with. I usually trust my first instinct, and I knew there was kind of a problem, even though I love that frame so much, but I'm sure I can find another stitch for it. But I'm super excited to have this done. I'll give you a little close-up on that. And I'll probably take it in like next week or something. Both of these will get framed. So this one was another one that I had showed you that I had bought this frame on clearance at uh, in the framer section at Hobby Lobby. And so I went ahead and finished it myself, put it in the frame. Remember, I had extended the design out. Here's the chart. This is by With Thy Needle and Thread and When Flowers Blossom and so I went ahead and just laced it and then my cards in the back with all the information and then I just used one of those poster boards to put behind it that I already have a printed wood thing on it. Now if you're interested in how I frame my own things I have a lacing and framing tutorial here on my channel. So but anyway this is all finished super excited about it now I can go ahead and put it on my b-wall. Okay, let me look at my notes. Okay, so I was able to finish a few things. I was able to finish my, let's see, my little house needleworks, the Blackbird in. And this is how I finished it. So what I did was I bought this frame from Hobby Lobby. I don't know if I bring it up close, if it's focused enough, you can see that information on it. And so you can see that this little hanger right here, it was actually the holes are drilled here because the hanger was this way, but the picture obviously goes this way, or I shouldn't say the picture, but the stitch. And so I just re-drilled holes right here so that it could hang from the top. And then I didn't take the backboard out or anything. It was already a frame. See how deep that is? That's how deep it was in the front as well. And so I just went ahead and laced this right on the mat board like I do with a piece of batting. And I just cut it the exact same size and then I just put it down in. And the frame was like, sort of like an unfinished barn wood. And I just felt like it needed to be painted a little bit to match these. So I painted this and distressed it with my farm girl Chalky Chicks paint, and I used Tractor Tire, which is a black with just a teeny bit of brown in it, which I really like. And then I sanded and distressed that. And I also have a tutorial on how I do that. But I was excited about this. It was all ready and finished for pie making day, which was my goal. Okay, I'm really excited to show you this little finish. Look how cute these little stockings turned out. So these are the His and Hers stockings by Plum Street Samplers. 
and here's the chart. Hope that doesn't have too much glare on it. And what I did was I used the same linen on the back, which let's see, that's the beach brew, 36 count beach brew. I used the same linen on the back as the front, but I did line them. I don't know if you can see that, but I lined them with this print, which is one of my B basics. And I just really like how that print looked with both of them. So with these, I thought it would be really fun that we could put little slips of paper in there on things we were thankful for each year or whatever, and then just kind of keep them in there. Like one thing maybe, you know, it'd be kind of fun to do something I'm thankful for that year for Mr. Honey and put in his stocking and we could do that since they're his and hers and that would be fun. So on the little hanger thing, I used, let me grab that. I used this smallest of my Be Cute lace in the natural to just make a little hanger and I just tacked them down with needle and thread. So I really love those. I love the tiny little size of them. They're fun. So that was a finish. And then my next, my next one is Thomas. And if you follow me on Instagram, you know I'm totally enthralled and in love with him. I've wanted to stitch him for so long. That's by uh, Lori from Not Forgotten Farm. And I had stitched him on my vintage cloth and shadow. So he just has a slight gray tint on the 25 count Lugana. And I had bought this board at Michael's. And I got the idea that if I finished him, let's see, let me do it a little bit closer so you can see close up before I put far away. So I had thought this board would really work out great, but I knew it was a little bit lighter than it needed to be. And so I thought, well, I would just put him over here and put one of those knobs in there. And because there was a key there that I would hang some of my vintage keys. Now you can buy keys that look vintage that are new now, like in the scrapbooking section from Tim Holtz, but these just happen to be vintage. And so I just strung them on this little little gingham ribbon and I I really really love how this turned out so let me show you the information on the let me take let me take these keys off so that and I got this knob from Hobby Lobby and so here's the information of the frame and this is what it looks like on the back and so where the screw ended up needing to go for the knob went right here but see how it sticks out quite a bit so what I did was I just stacked pennies and glued them together with the glue gun, the same height as that, and glued them over here so that when I hang it on the wall, it hangs evenly and I don't have this big old thing sticking out here. And so, and then of course I have my, my information cards. I use my library cards. They look like this. They come in a pack like that, pack of 12, and I use them for every piece that I do to keep track of all the information. But, and then this board already had the little jute hanger here. But I simply just strung those keys on there and have them right here. So there's Thomas. And someone had asked me if I knew the significance of 1863, and I don't. I think it's just a date that that Lori from Not Forgotten Farm put in, and I love how it looked. And so... When I'm looking at a stitched piece sometimes, I will change the date to something that has significance. I definitely didn't want to change the 1800 because of the old, you know, vintage look of this. I want to keep 1800, but I was born in 63, 1963. So I kept the 63 because that does have significance that Mr. Honey and I were both born in 1963. Okay, so I have one more finish for my stitch tober and that's thanksgiving comes again by the prairie schooler and i stitched mine on my farmhouse vintage cloth the 25 count lugana and so let me show you my finish 
this tray right here. And I'm super excited about this for a lot of reasons. I love the way it looks. Number one, I got the tray at Hobby Lobby. So let me show you the information on that. Hope that's not too much of a glare. So they had two sizes in this. They had, um, this is the smaller one, and then they have a larger size. But when I measured it, I knew if I stitched on 25 count Lugana that this would fit in there perfectly, which that never happens, you know, so I was pretty excited about that. So what I'm going to do with this is, um, and what I had done, but I'm going to kind of push it out, is because if you guys are Prairie Schooler fans, you know that they have a lot of charts that have the same, same stitch count. So I just brought a few out so you could see. So see this June, if I stitched on 25 count Lugana, would fit in this tray. May, I just grabbed a few that I have in my stash. And so I thought it might be kind of fun for some of these months to go in this tray as well. And I could just stitch them on different 25 count Luganas. And um, the tray came unfinished. The handles are just the same, but it came unfinished wood. So it either needed to be stained or painted. So I went ahead and painted this in my Farm Girl paints in Baby Chick color. And then I distressed it and um, put some dark wax on it. And, you know, according to my tutorial video that I've always already shown you. But I wanted to be able to push this out. So what I'm going to use is this, this uh, washi tape that will kind of stick it in there because I want to either hang it on the wall or just sit it up like this. It's kind of hard to show you with the camera the way it is, the angle, but um, it looks great hanging on the wall and it looks great just sitting on a shelf because of how flat this is. And so I wanted to be able to pop these out. So after painting, what I did was I drilled holes right here so that when I put the, when I taped this down from the back, that I could just take like, you know, some scissor tips or a needle or something and just push it out so that I could put another one in and then just keep them all together. So that's that finish. I love the poem on this. I'll, I'll never get tired of Prairie Schooler. I've been stitching Prairie Schooler for 30 years and I just, I just love it. Okay, so that's that. All right, what's next on my schedule? Okay, so in my notes I have, oh yeah, I want to show you guys some of the progress that I've had on some of my stitch tobers. This one is, oh, I need to turn the whole thing around, I think, because I stacked them all how I needed to show them. Okay, so this is another bag made for me by Christy out of my Prim fabric. And this is Hannah's Brownstone. Let me open the bag and show you the chart. But I did make some progress on, on this pattern and I just, I love this chart. And that's by the Scarlet House. And I showed you this on my floss tube number one with my Stitchtober lineup. But this is how much, and I just I love that house. There's a house that looks almost identical to this in the small town of Harriman where I grew up in Harriman, Utah. And as a little girl, I always looked at that house and said, I want to, I want to live in that house someday. And when I first saw this chart, I thought for sure it must have been modeled after that house because it looks just like it. So that's my progress on that. And I'll continue to stitch on that. And then this one is, okay, maybe they're not all upside down. <laughs> okay, so this one is the salt box sampler by With Thy Needle and Thread. And I had showed you that I had just had a little bit of a start on it. So here's the, here's the chart on that salt box quilt sampler. And so a lot of people commented, a lot of you are just taking care of me and I love that. But saying that I had missed the J and did I know that? But I, I did know that because it is not charted with a J because, you know, typically 
in the early alphabet, I was left off and J's were left off as, of samplers because they weren't in our early alphabet. So for example, the I was used for a J and a V was used for the U or vice versa or whatever. So anyway, so it was not charted with a J or a U and that's why. So I've just got the border done now and now I can start filling in those beautiful salt box houses. So I'll continue with that as well. And that's my prim bag and my prim needle minder that I'm using for that. Now this bag is a new bag that's coming soon. This is called my Big Dotty bag. That's the same mesh that my prim is and my actually my prim bag could fit inside of it. But I really wanted a big bag. I don't know if you can see the whole thing, but, and it's already, you know, got like the little things at the bottom, so it will fold out flat and stand up. But I typically, a lot have some big projects, and I like to be able to keep everything in there, and so that's why I wanted a big dotty bag. I also wanted to be able to use this for quilt blocks, for fabrics, and also for my yarns. So I'm really excited about this big dotty bag. I love the color. I love how it turned out. And yes, you can cross stitch on that too. So that'll be fun. But what I have in here is my Autumn at Hawk Run Hollow. I have been able to make a little bit of progress on that. And let me show you the chart. That's by Carriage House Samplings. There's the chart, and I showed you before that I'm going to leave the two Halloween ones out and just move these up. And as I'm stitching on this, I'm just, I finish this whole thing, and then I'm going to finish these two completely, and then I'll go ahead and move down and make these outlines and go ahead and do those two. But I'm really enjoying stitching on this. I know this is going to be a long project. It'd be nice to think maybe I could get it done in a year. We'll see. I'll just keep going. This is my stitch that I keep in my trailer most of the time, so we'll see. I guess it depends on how much camping I get in next year. Okay. Okay, next on my notes. Let's see. Oh, I wanted to show you. I always like to do a start for every holiday. So for Thanksgiving this year, I did this start, which is Oh Joyous Day. This is another bag that Christy made for me from my Vintage Housewife 2 collection. Let me show you the chart. So I've always loved this chart. I've had it for a little bit, but when I saw Brenda at from Brenda and the Serial Starter, her finish on it a while back, I was like, I've got to get that uh, kitted up so that I can just start it when I want to. And so I chose Thanksgiving Day because it's just kind of been sitting there and Oh Joyous Day is kind of fitting for Thanksgiving, I think. So I started it kind of the night before Thanksgiving a little bit. I was able to put the borders in and then yesterday I was able to start on some of the flowers. But I'm pretty excited about that. Let me grab the card so I can, the information card. So I can tell you exactly what I'm doing here. Okay, so I'm doing it on 36 count winter white seraphim fabric. And I love this linen. I was able to pick up a few pieces of the seraphim from, um, from uh, Shepherd's Bush. Sorry, just... Lost it for a minute there. Okay, so from Shepherd's Bush. And so this is the first that I've stitched on it. And I think it's beautiful. I love it. And again, this is the winter white. And I'm using all of the called for flosses for this. Right here. Except for two. I switched out the mauvey pinks for pomegranate. And then old brick. Because that just matches my my colors more so those are the colors that I'm doing that in pretty excited about that and I'll continue to stitch that and I'll show you my progress next month 
So because I have a, have a Thanksgiving start, of course I have a Christmas Day start. So I'm going to show you this. I might start at Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, depending on what time I get. But this is one that I've had pitted for quite a while, ever since Teresa put it out. And oh, here's all the floss. So this is all anchor. And for those of you who follow Teresa, who is the kitten stitcher, you know what I'm going to show you. It's the Savior's Praise. Isn't that beautiful? I just, just love it. And so I thought, because it's called the Savior's Praise, that it's fitting to start it on Christmas. And so also, before I continue on about that, see this bag that I decided to put it in? You guys asked me where it came from, and I wasn't sure, but look now, now I know. It's the Lily Tangle, and she's on Etsy. So I put that in there. I'm using, let's see, I'm using the 36 count beach brew for this. And I'm using all of the anchor flosses. Now I, I loved using the anchor for my all creatures, great and small. And so Teresa kitted this and so I got it from her. And I only switched out one color. I'm gonna use everything else, but I threw in so she had this red, which is a beautiful red, but I'm more of a truer red instead of a burgundy. And so I'm going to use for my reds the 3777 in DMC. And I think that looks great with all of those colors. And then in this cute little bag, which has no identification that I've had for a while. But isn't that fabric cute? She also called for some wig style works, and so I will be using those as well. So I'm excited about that. I'll show you my progress again on that one as well. I'll have to wait for Christmas Eve on that. Okay, so next, let's see. I've got, I want to show you these. I've been kind of hanging out here. So these are my new stitch cards. So for those of you who don't know, I put out a set of stitch cards quarterly through It's So Emma, my uh, publishing company. And this is set G. And they, she also has a club where you can just sign up where they just ship automatically to you. Now I went ahead and finished these the same way that I showed you in the tutorial how I do the little pillows. Let me pull this bowl in here. So these are stitched on my vintage cloth in parchment. But of course, you could stitch them on anything you wanted. So in the tutorial, I showed you how I put wool on the back. So I thought it might be kind of fun to show you a different alternative that I like to do sometimes too. So again, here's my Be Cute Lace, and I used the medium one in here. And I just folded the raw edges under, and I just covered my little stitching line and put the lace on there. And... I just kind of decided that it looked really great with that cloth color. And so I put that in there and then I just used my some little buttons, some of my cute little buttons. I have several sets of those. And I wanted to show you because when I did the tutorial on this, I got a lot of questions about where to get these pins. And they're just loop pins and I've got them on Amazon or in the scrapbooking aisle. But I thought I'd pull these out because Tim Holtz is always a good go-to for these little finishing things. So here's the loop pins in there, and there's like in three different colors in there. And then here's some different kind of pins that are called wire pins that look like little vintage. To me, they look like little vintage diaper pins. And then um, there's some little tiny rusted safety pins. So I just wanted to show you those so you could kind of see that that's what you can use. And I love, love how these turned out. Now, another thing I want to show you about these is this wreath. So you can do it with the bow on the top or you can turn it around and have the bow on the bottom, however you like to do it. But these pillows are really fun, easy to make, fun little finish, and they'll go right 
in my little bowl with all of my other cute little pillow finishes. So those will be out next month, first of the month, so actually very soon. And they're on the coming soon page if you wanted to pre-order at uh, Fat Quarter Shop. Okay, so the next thing, let's see. i got to check my notes to make sure that I go in order or else I know I'm going to forget something. Okay, so what's coming up next is I'm going to show you my winter stitching and the plans I have now to continue on. So let's just pull this whole stack in here. So I've already finished stitching two snowmen that I need to get finished. So, well, let's talk about the, the top one. And this bag, I had both of these in this bag. Even though they're by two different companies, they just were similar, and so I just kept them in this bag. So let me talk about this bag. Look how cute that is. I like the size of it. It's perfect for smalls. And this is by Fern and Jilly on Etsy. And I really, really love the print on that. Okay, so this top one is Parson Brown by Not Forgotten Farm. And let me read you the info card on that. It is uh, stitched on 36 count Winter's Brew. I love Winter's Brew. I use that a lot. And it's just, I just grabbed over dyed threads for my stash. It's not a lot of colors in here. It was really a fun stitch. It was quick and I love this. I'll probably finish him into a little pillow. I'm not sure, you know, to put in a vintage bowl with some Christmas greenery or something, but I'd love to stitch snowman because to me, they're not just Christmas, they're, you know, winter stitches. So I do put my snowman out for Christmas, but then I keep them out all through January because, you know, I live here in Utah. We are a snow state. We're famous for that, for our ski resorts and snowboarding and everything. And so we have a lot of snow in January and even on to February, but um, so I keep out the snowman. And so this one is December 25th, Merry Christmas Pin Keep by Stacy Nash. And I stitched him on 36 count beach brew. And I love how he turned out. I'll probably do a pillow just like Hair Hammy Parson Brown. Cassidy's filming me again, so look how cute they both look together. I don't know if you can see them both together, but I think it'll be fun to put them both in the same bowl. So I have a third snowman going, or at least kitted, I should say. So this bag is, let's see, I don't know if I have any ID on this bag. Oh, right here. You got a bag from Etsy, but isn't that cute? So in here, I have Teresa Kogut's Stew Snowman, which I wanted to stitch for a while. And he's a big, tall snowman. And uh, I can't wait to do him. I don't think, I'll probably end up framing him or something. I don't know, because um, it's gonna be too big for a pillow. But I've chosen Winter's Brew, 36 count. And then I just grabbed some, some floss for my stash because there's really not a lot of colors. So you can see the chart. So this is what I'm using. And look at this cute little vintage needle minder. And so these are just the colors. And then in my bag, I put a few of the extra bayberry and a few of the extra grits because I think he's gonna take quite a few. But I love how those look on there. I think I got this cute little thread keeper from Kitten Stitcher too. I believe that's where that came from. And I thought it was perfect for my little snowman stitches. Now I've had this needle minder for a while, but I know I got I know I got this needle minder on Etsy, but I'm sorry, I don't know. I don't know where, but I'll find out and let you know next time. Or if anybody knows, just leave it here in the comments. And so there's that one. Stew Snowman. That's going to be fun. My next one 
Okay, so this bag came from Dot Dot Goose, from Denise, super fun. And what I have in here is a pattern that I picked up just recently and I just used, I just grabbed DMCs from my stash and I'm going to use this 32 count Belfast linen petty point so it looks like it's snowing. And I just picked this up at Pine Needles and it's by Pine Mountain Design, which is Sandra Workman, who owns Pine Needles Quilt Shop here in Utah at Gardner Village. And I think that's going to be a really fun stitch. It's just recipe for a snowman. And I think it'll be fast and it'll look really fun on that. So I'm going to do that one to go with my snowman. And then here's my latest bag that I got from Christy and she made this out of my cozy Christmas and I just I love it I love it love it love it so in here I'm doing some ornaments I've been going to do these for a while and I thought it was time to start so here's the fabric let me get my info card out so I can tell you exactly what that fabric's called because I've forgotten now it's raw silver 32 count Belfast linen, which is what it's called for. And so I'll be stitching that on that. I love the glitter in there. And so what I'll be stitching is all of the Glitter Village, Glitter Houses. They're all different. There's nine of them. A lot of people have been stitching them all together, all nine of them on the same cloth, but I'm gonna do them separately because I'm gonna put them on my tree. So, I'm going to start those. I don't know how. They look like they're pretty fast to stitch, but I don't know. I haven't even started. So we'll see how far I get. But when all nine of them are completed, I'm going to put them on my tree. Because my tree in my front room already has, you know, glitter villages on it. Like real little glitter villages and puts homes and vintage ornaments and things like that. So I just thought these would be awesome to add. And then the threads I'm using are just ones that I've pulled from my stash. Lots of bamboo. And I just pulled a bunch. I don't know which ones I'm going to use, which ones I'm not, but that's a pretty good variety. And we'll go from there once I start stitching. So there's that one. Put it back in its cute little bag. Sometimes it's hard to get everything back in there nice and neat. Of course, when I'm trying to hurry, you know. Okay. Now this bag, let me see if I know where this came from. So unique. I love it when people put their little tags in there so that we always know where they came from. So this one I started a long time ago and I decided it was time to pull back out. This is all... I have done on it so far, and it's Christmas Rules by Lizzie Kate. So it's all these little, I don't know why some are right side up, some are upside down, but it's all these little Christmas rules. I don't even know if you can get this anymore, but when it finishes, you can, off their website, you can download the title part that says Christmas Rules and just do the whole thing. So I have the cloth and everything, which I like, but the reason I kind of put it away is, I don't know, it just wasn't my colors as much, some of them, and I just kind of was waiting for some colors. I think, I don't know why I never got it back out, but I think I was waiting for some colors to switch them up, and I just never did. So I've got 40 count, it's on 40 count, and it's mystery linen because I didn't record what it was, and uh, I'm not really sure. But I'm, I'm going to use the same linen, and I might just take out this blue, leave the rest, and then recolor and start. But that's kind of my goal to get back on that and finally get it finished. I mean, I, I think it's been in the bag for like, you know, four years or something, or at least kitted up. I, did, I just put it in this bag. It hasn't been in this bag, but it's been kitted for quite a while. Okay, so the next one I'm going to do, this is another bag by Denise from Dot Dot Goose and of course I have to have a prairie schooler stitch 
So in here, I just grabbed my own DMCs. This is another Seraphim fabric. And this one is called Silver Lining. I really like all those colors on there. But what I'm gonna stitch is January. I'm gonna stitch this. I love, I love these little, little kids on the sled. That's how I grew up. It's like when I look at this picture, I'm like, that is the winters, how I grew up here in Utah. And I love the square one as well, the snow day, but I really wanted to get that snowman in there. So I'm gonna do it just like this. I'm gonna do a little bit smaller instead of on my 25 count because I don't really want it to go in that tray. I have another idea for finishing this. So I'm doing it on 36 count. And um, that's what I'm gonna do for that. Put in that bag and then I have one last stitch. This is a bag I got from Christy as well a while ago. And I love this. I love this fabric, it's so cute. And what I've got in here is, you probably won't be surprised because I see everybody doing this, but this is Winter Rose Manor by With My Needle and Thread. And I'm gonna stitch it on, let me pull this out. My 36 count Dirty Linen Edinburgh, which, which uh, the sample was originally stitched on. And I have that in my stash. And let's take that out of the bag, but isn't that beautiful? To me, this isn't, I mean, it is Christmassy, but it's more winter to me. And it is called Winter Rose Manor. And so I don't, I'm sure I won't have it done for Christmas, but I will have it to display in January or even year round. I think it's just beautiful. It's just a winter scene. And then I haven't even put the flosses on a ring or anything yet, but. I will. I've just got all of the called for in here. I think it's going to be gorgeous. Got my card filled out. Not, I haven't even organized this yet. Like I say, first thing I just kit it and put it in a bag and then I find my little bitty boards and put in there and, you know, get a ring and a needle minder and all that stuff. So, that's the last, last step, but I love that. I'll be stitching on that for a little while. So that's what I have going on. I had a lot of finishes to show you, a lot of uh, fully finished and some starts. So that's what stitching's all about. That's what makes us all happy. And thanks so much for joining me on my third floss tube. And I will see you on my next floss tube which will be number four in January. And in between, I'll be doing quilt tutorials and crochet as well. Thanks so much, and I'll chat with you later.